Why should I go down quietly? I'm really good at what I do. I know that I can rock a crowd. I've also been in a band that has made some records that have stood the test of time and become, you know, much loved anthems. Oh my God, I had a complete surprise on my 50th birthday and had a little rave in my front garden and helium balloons and more cake. And then we all sat in my back garden, absolutely freezing our tits off because my birthday's in December. And it was the most, actually, the most beautiful experience. I am recalibrating my life somewhat because I have turned 50. It was very weird because my 50th happened in lockdown and I did feel a slight sense of existential dread. But then the other side of that is actually my life is very sorted in a lot of ways. So perhaps I didn't feel that great sense of reckoning that, that other people might feel that I've got to 50 and there's so much that I didn't do. In fact, if there's anything I want to take from being 50, it's just to do a bit less. Touring pre-lockdown, doing loads of gigs, especially the festival season, is a real physical and mental undertaking. Um, it is an exhausting thing to do, to, to perform in front of, you know, tens of thousands of people and to make sure you're delivering every single time. And a lot of the time you're doing that on maybe one or two hours sleep. So to be able to manage that physically, I have to maintain a, a level of fitness because it is grueling, the lack of sleep, the jumping on and off of planes. And I'm also juggling that with always having to dash home because I've got a child to look after. Obviously, I have to weigh it up with at what expense does that come? At my health, you know, bring, bringing up my son, being there for him. He's just going into GCSE cycle. I found for me, and because it was affordable, having a personal trainer made, made a huge difference. So I would do training once or twice a week, you know, proper weights training and, you know, really making sure I have mobility. And I've been doing Pilates for years. So those are my two main fitness things. And I, and I love walking. There's just no replacement for decent sleep. And if lockdown has done anything good, it has allowed me a little bit of space to recover physically from the rigors of the touring world, the crazy early morning flights, the late nights, you know, driving four hours across a country to get to a festival, you know, staying up till three in the morning to do the set, you know, getting on the first plane home, just the wear and tear of travel. So, I mean, you can do this kind of stuff, you know, running on thin air when, when, you're, when you're in your 20s. But I think my world is, is littered with people who've, you know, collapsed, lost their health. So if you add anything, you know, like lots of drugs and alcohol into that mix too, it can be very, very toxic. And I would say, you know, I don't drink and I don't take drugs. So I'd say I've sort of spared myself some of the ravages of mm. um, that. <laughs> He's been on tour with me since he was six months old. So on the one hand, I've had a huge flexibility in my working life because when I was on tour with the band, I took my son with me. I also had to bring a nanny as well because I was on stage. So when I was on stage, somebody had to look after him. But it was the only way to make it manageable. And the nanny was part of the crew. But that could be built into the whole cost of the tour. So in a way, I had that support. I couldn't have done what I do without that. I think coping with single motherhood, just about, has been a fairly big achievement. Uh, my son's dad lives on the other side of the world. And I've discovered the joy of the male nanny, which has really helped me be able to be a working mum. There are very few women of my age who are still out there performing in quite the same way, especially in the world of dance music. But then I see the kind of gatekeepers of the scene who tend to be male and quite a lot of them are in their 50s now. And if they're still going, I think, well, I need to be out there representing. So first off is that attitude of feeling, why should I go down quietly? I'm really good at what I do. I know that I can rock a crowd. I've also been in a band that has made some records that have stood the test of time and become, you know, much loved anthems. So there's a point to me being out there. And I feel like I was there at the beginning and I've been flying the flag, making the music, 
and performing, you know, since the early 90s. And Without why shouldn't a- I be here now? Being a woman in somewhat a man's world is, um, it's not for the faint hearted. And I think you have to have a bit of resilience and robustness to be able to deal with that environment. Um, and a bit of a feisty attitude, really. I mean, I've been very, very lucky, I would say. I've been, in the main, hugely respected and not treated negatively. But I also know behind the scenes, I certainly wasn't paid as much as my male counterparts. And this is when I had like number one hits all over the world. Um, For example, you know, I kind of find that uh, I found out by accident that there wasn't parity in what I was being paid. So on the one hand, there were benefits to being a woman in that world, because there were so few of us, we got a bit more coverage. But then there was also um, a kind of dismissive attitude sometimes from male promoters who couldn't quite believe that actually I was technically pretty skilled. And I always felt I had to work twice as hard to make sure I got invited back to come off every time and be absolutely brilliant. But I think there's a bias and it starts in school um, that women are nudged away from technology and tech subjects. You know, they meet systemic sexism from the off, that there are buttons and gadgets to push. And that is somehow a boy's job, that skills are gendered. And that is something that why I'm still doing it is because I want to represent. I don't want to just go quietly because the entertainment business says this entertainment business being pretty much run by men. Women reach a shelf life, a sell by date, especially in pop music, obviously. Um, And I, I want to be one of the people that challenges that perception. Too many of the connotations are definitely within a sort of negative patriarchal framework that you're somehow, and it's linked to your biology, you're used up, you're an old crone, you know, because you can't breed anymore. For me, those negative connotations of midlife are quite powerful and I think it would be really good to to reclaim what midlife means. Midlife means more autonomy, self-knowledge, Midlife means a certain amount of financial stability, but I am middle class midlife. So a different different thing to being midlife and one's pension has been eroded. Um, Yes, Uh, what else does midlife mean? Uh, Menopausal, postmenopausal, but that can be a powerful thing. I think it's really important to really acknowledge how tricky the menopausal years can be for women certainly have been for me when I thought I was almost having a nervous breakdown and it wasn't it was menopause symptoms made me very very depressed also coupled with lack of sleep continuous hot flushes it was really 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 difficult just feeling very tearful a lot of the time and obviously in a world where I'm expected to be the entertainment having to drag myself up and out and and present a positive face was quite difficult anyway you'd be up half the night with night sweats so why not be in a nightclub I suppose they're not a joke they're not just women complaining and why should women have to put up with it if a man had menopausal symptoms even for a week the whole world would fall apart If there's anything I've learned, the difference between being the age I am now and, you know, my younger years was the deep wishing for things to be different and not really being quite as able to live in the moment as and and, and practicing some kind of acceptance of, of the way they are. I will have relationships and I'll accept them on their terms. They might not be forever. They might not be the integrated, blended family that occasionally I dream of, but I have to deal with what works in my life as it is, as a working mother, as someone who's actually only got a certain amount of time to devote to the pursuing or having of relationships. You know, 
in terms of convenience, it would be amazing to live with someone and have them here supporting me all the time and also potentially looking after my children. But I now understand that I can separate those two things. I can have a relationship that is just for me. I think I've realised more and more, if I'm not happy, that's just going to reverberate outwards in, into the world and into my family, into my child's life. I might have to be a bit selfish. I'm going to do the things that make me happy. And I think that's something that a lot of women just won't grab hold of because they feel there are too many consequences. There'll be some sort of punishment. And actually this kind of heterosexist model of how relationships should look, it's quite damaging. It makes you feel less than if you're not included in that and it makes you feel othered and... You know, I think it's a narrative women are always dealing with is that, you, that you've failed at things if they haven't fitted the kind of tra traditional narrative. Um, and there's always some hoop to jump through, you know, whether it's one's own appearance, the way you act, the kind of space you take up in the world to the kind of structure your family takes, you know. Um, and I feel very strongly again, the age I am now, there are things I just won't put up with that I might have done before because I was anxious about falling foul of these kind of unwritten societal rules. One needs a kind of a method of self-reflection so that if you think you're unhappy with something, is it really that? Or are you projecting something onto a situation? Or could it change next week? You know, they say, you know, you make a decision in haste and repent in leisure, don't they? At this period in my life, I'm not hugely in favour of making huge sudden changes, especially if it puts you in a place of financial instability. Yeah, just follow your dreams. I mean, I, I find that really those sort of statements are quite banal. And there's a deepness in them, but it's so individual. I wouldn't advise people to do one or the other. I would say go on the journey to know yourself first, and then you can make decisions based on a deep sense of self-knowledge, self-love, understanding that you have self-worth. There are many, many achievements and gold records hanging on the walls and brilliant gigs played and music made. But friends that have come along with me on that journey made it all meaningful. So my son has put me in his phone as birth giver. I'm usually calling him to get him off PlayStation to come and have his dinner. Yeah, Sister Bliss, birth giver.